Hello everyone and welcome to Playing Nest Universal Conversation with myself and Wow. So today I'll be talking to Hazel Lindsay, who is a science teacher, about the importance of science. Science is so critical in our everyday life. When you look around you, you see everything you do involves around science. That so many of us take it for granted. The COVID has now brought reality back to us has brought us to reality that our scientists, our doctors, our nurses, our pharmacologists, all of these people are so important in everything we do. Without them, we probably won't be talking about a vaccination today. But they have come up with different vaccination and still coming up with more to save us from this big pandemic. But all this stems from science. Hazel is the founder of Science with Hazel platform that aims to teach people how to enjoy science especially secondary school kids. I'm excited to talk to her on how she's doing this and what lessons we can learn to help our kids overcome this science pain of thinking that science is irrelevant, of science is not a fun subject, but how does she bring the fun back to kids? Meet Hazel as we share, as she shares her story. Hello everyone and welcome to Painless Universal, a conversation with myself and Welsh. Today I'll be talking to Hazel. She is the founder of the platform called Science with Hazel. Hazel, absolutely delighted, especially times like these um, where the social media has taken over. I think one of the reasons we wanted to talk to you is because social media has taken over. And so many kids, we talked to them today. They're so keen on being gaming, doing things in gaming, um, Instagramming, which is not bad. I mean, if that's where you, your focus is. But at the same time, we still need more kids to do a little bit of science. We've seen what the pandemic has caused, for example. It was, if not for the scientists, for example, we would not be finding this vaccination, which we're so lucky, fortunate to find right now. But this is all to do with science, for example. I want to know, Hazel, before we get into all of that, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Because where did your curiosity come from? Who is Hazel? Well, that's a very good question. So um, as a child, I was always incredibly inquisitive, wanting to know, you know, why does snow fall from the sky sometimes and other times it falls as rain? So I think, first of all, I had quite an inquisitive nature. And then with school, obviously, you know, you, you're made to do maths and English and science. And I found that I was naturally good at science. So it made sense for me, therefore, to study um, veterinary science at university because, sorry, she's about to walk into screen. This is my cat. And she, um, I absolutely adore animals. Sorry, she will try and sit down. And I love animals. So it made total sense for me to go and study veterinary medicine at Cambridge University. And I loved studying. I loved the study part of it, but this is so embarrassing. I realized that I had an aversion to um, body fluids quite early on. And that's not something they double check to interview and why would they? So I realized that although I love the science aspect, the animal aspect, actually becoming a, pra a practicing vet wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. And then I've always enjoyed kind of sharing my knowledge. And so I, I trained as a science teacher and then because it was quite frustrating, you know, being in schools and doing so much behavior management and it kind of took away from my real interest and my excitement with science. And I still wanted to kind of impart my, my knowledge to people. So I thought, well, I'll work as a professional tutor. And then on the side of that, I'll start my YouTube channel because having private tuition is quite a luxurious commodity, I suppose. And I found that creating my YouTube channel would mean that I could number one, talk to far more people than the one-to-one -one setting. And number two, that as long as you had access to Wi-Fi or 4G, you'd be able to download my videos from anywhere in the world. And that's how organic it was really. It all came about by accident. That's amazing. That's really, truly, I love what you said because it's, um, it's quite cold and it's snowing in London where I am. And I'm, I'm going to wonder how does this all happen? Why does it get really cold? How do we get snowflakes? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it's that curiosity that gets people wondering and that makes you go dig further. So you went on to start, start the science platform, um, Science with Hazel platform. How did you decide that this is the right angle to go about it with it to get to reach more people? It was, like I said, it was so organic. I never had a kind of, I need to get 
X number of subscribers. I want this many people interested in my work. I kind of thought, like I said to you, I was I was teaching the the very wealthy people really in London who can afford science tuition. And although I love my job and I love you know meeting everyone one on one and getting to know them, it didn't it didn't sit right to me that I could just I just do that all day and not and not try and share my knowledge. So you know, I'm so impressed with the platform you've built. It's incredibly professional. Um, if you look at my work, it's very kind of, I'm just, I'm just talking from the heart and I'm just saying, look, I have this information. It might not be the shiniest, most animated, most pictorial tutorial I'll ever see, but I know I can do a good job of actually teaching the content. And so when the first few people started watching, I was like, I was shocked because I was talking to myself and I thought I was really only talking to myself. So when it kind of got more popular, that, that was a real moment for me. No, I, I, you, you've done a great job. I looked at your um, YouTube channel and it's really good, very informative as well. Yeah. But today, yeah, it would be really hard to get students to understand the value of science. Why do you think more students should value science? Because it's really, really hard to get it. Them. is really difficult. But I think, as you said, you already alluded to the, the mm. coronavirus pandemic. You know, this has changed our lives. Obviously, for the poor people who've been, you know, properly affected in terms of, um, loved ones dying from this dreadful disease but even for other you know the, the wider effect it has every single person's life has changed whether it's due to their business um, I don't know seeing a, a down in profits or not being able to see loved ones and obviously mental health issues so this this whole pandemic has such far-reaching effects and so I think it's so important that young people who will become the scientists of the future understand this and know that any work that they're doing now will have greater effects in the future if they go on and become the scientists that develop the vaccinations because the human population is growing exponentially. And, you know, this it's quite likely that within our lifetimes we, we may see another pandemic. And so we need to have the right scientists in place that can actually, you know, create the vaccinations which can hopefully cut this off at the source as opposed to allowing it to to take hold of us in the way that coronavirus has. Absolutely, it's now, it's now we truly appreciate the doctors and nurses, all of these guys. Yeah. And our pharmacologists, uh, you, know, you know, I can't even start beginning to name all of these guys who are really working endlessly, tirelessly to make sure we are better, that we get through this pandemic and we could get back to life as normal. It's not hard for them because they've never been in the spotlight in a, lo in a long time. The spotlight has been drawn away from them to other things because people have not seen the benefits. Yeah, we know we have cancer, but it, it hasn't been that global impact. Yeah. And this, has, and this has shined a light. And I really think people who are in the science field should really embrace this and really utilize this moment to encourage more and more people yeah. to get into science because this is the time. This is the time to make a real difference and you're actually saving lives. You're saving people. Can you tell us some of the um, things you can remember that science has influenced in the world? Oh, that is such a wide reaching question. I think, <laughs> I think that the question, the, everyone's talking about climate change. And I don't just mean, you know, scientists talking about the greenhouse effect, global warming, talking about everyone, you know, commenting on whether they're getting plastic straws or not, whether they're using bamboo toilet roll. And I know even talking to my friends, like we had a conversation the other day just about using solid shampoos rather than single use plastics. So for me, I think that everyone should be, we should be, we should be, you know, like you said, the whole shining the light on science, shining the light on coronavirus. I think this is the chance for us all to make, even if it's just small changes, I think as a whole, the human population is so large that if everyone starts moving across to a point where they're using fewer plastics, mm. then I think we'll see a huge difference. Um, so I think it could be quite a positive thing, really. You know, you said you're a science teacher. Have you missed that group activity? Because one of the things that with the coronavirus things happening right now, people are no longer together. So how have you tried to change the way you teach um, when you have to do a group activity? Because I think one of the easiest ways for kids to learn is when they're together, they learn, they see the experiments happening and they see, um, and they could then try it out themselves. I remember being in groups, they remember being group A, group B, group C. How is that done now? And what, what innovative idea have you come up with now? I think this is difficult for me to answer because for the last five years I've worked as a private tutor so I stepped away from the large group teaching and primarily I just teach one-on-one -on -one. 
Um, and that was because I wanted to get to know people because I just, I love getting to know people and finding out their stories. So for me, the one-to-one -one teaching, but entirely it has made it completely different having to do everything over Zoom as opposed to going to people's houses to teach them. Um, in terms of making it more interesting, for sure, I think this is where social media is amazing, particularly TikTok. Um, I've been making short 20 second videos, as you mentioned, you know, small volcano experiments, looking at why water out of a tap bends due to static electricity. Um, so it's not ideal, but these, these videos I'm making use very normal household um, goods. And so hopefully if it inspires even two people to go off, find their washing up liquid, find their bicarb of soda to create their own volcano, I think, yeah, it's not ideal, but if if it does ignite people's interest in a way that's more practical, I think that can only be a good thing. But yeah, no, I, in terms of teachers in school, not teaching to larger teaching groups, I, I can't even imagine how how they're finding the whole situation. Yeah, I, I, I can't imagine myself because I think it's as much even the teachers and the, and the students as well, not being able to be there. And sometimes even when the teacher asks you to do things, you compare you compare notes, you see what the other person went, what went wrong yeah. with their adverse experiments and what went wrong with yours or why your one did exceptionally well. You know, moving on with science, um, what would be your hopes for science um, in schools? How do you think, um, for example, even if the government is trying to incorporate more and more science and, and make it more engaging, how do you think they could do that to make it more, uh, enjoyable for kids? I think um, for sure making it kind of more relevant to today's society because I think fundamentally particularly subjects like chemistry they've been taught the same for the last 80 years this is the periodic table this is the structure of the atom and it's quite difficult to get excited about something which is so small that you can't really imagine it mm -hmm. obviously we need these fundamentals but if we can link plastics when we're rather than teaching crude oil related to just you know, this is a polymer, if you can actually compare different plastics in situ, being like, why is this a better option compared with this one? This one's biodegradable and actually do experiments showing the bacteria breaking down that plastic. I do think it will just increase the, the relevance for students and make and make them care more. You know, if, if you have a plastic bag that's going to stay around for over 200 years and you can kind of show that in a classroom setting, I think that that's the way the government should be going in terms of the new syllabus. Mm. Um, yeah, I like that. Make it more engaging, make it more, um, change it a little bit. Periodic table, I can't believe that's still being taught and how that has changed. Yeah. Yeah. Day long, day long too. <laughs> I remember doing that in science school, yeah. Um, yeah. No, hey, so, um, so anyone who tries to get in touch with you, because I know you do one-to-one -one tutoring, you um, do lots of YouTube as well to help other people, especially people who can... Um, the wider community, rather than just the uh, privileged ones who could afford it, but the wider community, those who want to watch what you're doing, how do they get in touch with you? Oh, that's just easy to find on YouTube. You literally just have to um, YouTube Science of Hazel and all my tutorials will pop up. Um, yeah, I always get comments like, oh, because honestly, the videos, some of my most watched videos, it sounds crazy. And I'm always being told from a kind of... Um, smart search point of view that my videos should be shorter but my most popular videos are like three hours long because I'll go it sounds crazy but I'll go through an entire specification in one video and I yeah I always get people being like oh you do this for free it must have taken you so long why do you do it and I think like I said it is because if it helps I get sorry I do get people literally in places like India Malaysia all around the world because they're all sitting British exam boards and they and to get comments from them saying how useful the video was is, is more than enough payment. I don't need paying, obviously, but yeah. there is incredible satisfaction from that. But yeah, just YouTube, Science with Hazel, and all the content will pop up. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much, Hazel, for this conversation. And hopefully this will get more and more kids, and uh, even my son as well, to be more interested in science. And I mean, your conversation was so in, you know, enlightened me because I got to think really, the meaning of science and why it's so important because sometimes you forget that conversation you forget 
the meaning of why you're doing something. You think, okay, let's just do it, but why are you actually doing it? And the, cor the whole COVID thing has brought us memories that it is quite important that we need scientists out there and we need people who are engaged like yourself, who are putting those tools out there to the young ones. Thank you so much for doing the great work you're doing. Keep shining and keep doing the hard work you're putting in. And I hope you get some reward in the future for everything you've done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hazel. Thanks for your time.